With the ID.5 mid-sized coupe SUV, Volkswagen offers a more aspirational kind of mid-sized EV crossover. It certainly has a dash more pavement presence than the ID.4 SUV it's entirely based upon, and in top GTX hot hatch form, it better showcases the brand's more potent all-wheel drive dual motor powertrain. It's been considerably improved in this updated form, enough to now make it worth a second look? You might just think so. The forward thrust away from rest isn't quite as abrupt as it is in some smaller EVs. And a lot of that's to do with this car's prodigious two-ton curb weight, a factor which affects most areas of this car's drive demeanor, sometimes helpfully, sometimes not. That, of course, is a legacy of the substantial battery packs it must carry about. The 77 kilowatt hour battery alone, the only one offered to ID5 customers, weighs a portly 493 kilograms. Despite all that, the performance on offer in this revised model is reasonably brisk, and that's thanks to quite a bit of re-engineering on Volkswagen's part for this improved model. The major ID5 change since launch is the introduction of the much more sophisticated APP 550 drive unit we first saw on the ID7, which offers significantly more power together with reduced energy consumption. And it's made a huge difference. From launch, mainstream ID5s were available either with a pro motor generating 177 PS or a pro performance motor with 204 PS. Now there's one mainstream pro motor with substantially more 286 PS and more significantly up to 75% more pulling power. Torques up from 310 to 545 Newton meters. Despite that, EV driving range is also improved to 339 miles, 11.8 miles further than before. That same 545 Newton meter torque figure also applies to the top GTX badged ID5 model we're trying today. Here, the 77 kilowatt hour battery is mated to electric motors on both axles, which delivers four wheel drive capability and a more potent total output that's also increased as part of this product upgrade from 299 to 340 PS. Good enough to improve the 62 mile an hour sprint to just 5.4 seconds. It was 6.3 seconds before, as previously the top speed is 112 miles an hour. Here again, drive range is improved to 328 miles, up from 300 miles before. Otherwise, the engineering of this car remains the same. So mainstream versions are rear driven. Yes, like Volkswagen's original Beetle. There was a good reason why back in the 40s, Beetle designer Ferdinand Porsche favored this format. And when you drive an ID5 in town, you quickly realize the real advantages of placing its powertrain, the electric motor, and its associated single speed auto gearbox on the back axle, thereby freeing up the front wheels for steering duties. The rear-driven format also benefits this Volkswagen beyond the city limits, allowing a near 50-50 virtually perfect weight distribution, which together with the low center of gravity provided by the central battery pack placement, helps disguise those extra battery kilos. Traction through the turns is excellent and body roll is checked by firm damping cleverly engineered for suppleness over poor surfaces. Though bigger potholes and speed humps and more extreme cases of broken bitumen will catch it out. Unless that is, you've stretched all the way up to this top of the range GTX model and got the optional DCC or dynamic chassis control adaptive damping system that we've been trying here. That's been enhanced on this improved model to give a greater spread between comfort and dynamics. It feels good through faster corners as well, helped by the way that Volkswagen's EVs differ from their combustion counterparts in the placement of the steering rack ahead of the front axle. Unfortunately though, feedback through the helm has been clinically anaesthetized, even if you opt for a top model like this with the progressive steering setup which uses variable steering rack and pinion gearing to give more direct responses to larger steering angles. Either way, though the rack is direct and weights up nicely with speed, it seems to have 
little interest in handling communication, even when you select Sport, the most dynamic of the three main drive mode settings the drivetrain provides on mainstream models. The others are Eco and Comfort, plus there's an individual menu via which you can select your own parameters. Exterior design is obviously important to you if you're after an ID5, otherwise you'd have paid less for an ID4 instead. And the SUV coupe silhouette we first saw on the brand's ID Cross concept car certainly delivers more pavement presence than you get with this car's showroom stablemate, embellished by roof rails and big wheels, but not by any exterior changes as part of this first model update. Whether you think it's as powerful, confident and elegant as Volkswagen thinks it is will be a subjective call. All the key drive stuff sits over the rear axle, principally the single speed gearbox and the permanent magnet synchronous electric motor that's been mated to it, both very efficiently packaged. Volkswagen says that both elements together with the associated control electronics collectively weigh just 90 kilograms and could fit into a typical gym bag. All of this powered by a high voltage battery that's been efficiently arranged in the underbody to save space. Which leaves nothing to sit here at the front end but a few auxiliary units like the air conditioning compressor and of course the steering rack. Enough of the outside, let's take a look in the cabin. There's no need for a gear lever, an ignition slot, or a handbrake, though unlike Tesla, Volkswagen does still think you need a start-stop button. Also unlike its American rival, Volkswagen thinks you still need a gear selector, though with this revised ID5, that's been moved to the steering column as part of the package of interior changes that have considerably improved the front of cabin experience in this enhanced model. The biggest of these is this, the new bigger 12.9 inch infotainment central touchscreen. With its simpler menus, more intuitive control structure and more responsive IDA voice assistant. Other changes include illuminated sliders for the temperature and volume controls, an improved version of the available augmented reality navigation system, and an optional 480 watt 10 speaker Harman Kardon audio upgrade, which we've been trying here. Otherwise, things are much as before, the same as an ID4. So you sit quite high on top of all those batteries and get this little 5.3 inch instrument display behind the steering wheel. Build quality is generally good, but cheaper plastics betray the cost cutting necessary to undergird all that sophisticated EV technology. Right. Time to take a look out back. Now, rear cabin space was one of the things we really liked about the ID5, but with 25 millimeters less roof height, will that be compromised here? To some extent, yes. Headrooms are compromised not only by that more swept back silhouette, but also by the fact that Volkswagen has standardized this vast panoramic glass roof for ID5 customers. And the result is that anyone traveling here that's over six foot tall will find their hair brushing the ceiling. Still, you'd expect to have to make a slight compromise in that regard to get this more stylish body shape. In terms of space for your legs and knees, as in the ID4, it's all very impressive, as so often these days in a mid-sized EV, uncompromised by the packaging needs of a combustion powertrain. Despite having the driveway footprint of a Volkswagen Tiguan, the brand claims interior space more akin to the larger old Tiguan all-space model and that's pretty much how it feels. It's also a wider cabin than you'd expect a car of this size to be able to provide and with no central transmission tunnel to obstruct things, three adults could actually fit reasonably easily into the back of this car. Okay, we'll finish with a look at the boot. Once the wide hatch rises, the space provided at 549 litres is surprisingly six litres larger than that of an ID4. The rear bench doesn't split flexibly 40-20-40 like it does in, say, that BMW iX3 we mentioned earlier, but Volkswagen does at least provide a ski hatch so that longer items can be poked through into the cabin. Flattening the 60-40 split rear bench frees up 1,561 litres of capacity loaded to roof height. As we keep saying when testing EVs, range readings aren't the be-all and end-all or at least they won't be if the car in question can offer quick charging times. The original ID5 could charge at 135 kilowatts, and it's disappointing that as part of this upgrade, Volkswagen hasn't taken the opportunity to improve that for mainstream models. 
It clearly could have done because as part of this update, the charging speed for the top GTX variant we're trying here, a version few will want to stretch to, has been increased to a far more usable 175 kilowatts. At a suitably rapid DC public charger, that allows an ID5 GTX to take on enough energy for 110 miles in about 10 minutes. The charging times for more ordinary Pro Motor ID5s, though, remain as before. At a public DC rapid charger, such a mainstream ID5 can be replenished from 5 to 80% in 29 minutes. That kind of time span would probably give you 230 to 250 miles of real world driving. Back at home, an AC1 phase 7.4 kilowatt garage wall box would replenish the 77 kilowatt hour battery from zero to 100% in 12 and a quarter hours. Though you could almost halve that time if your property or business can support a gutsier AC3 11 kilowatt charger. In summary, the changes made here have done a great deal to improve the ID5 as an ownership proposition. If only the car had originally been launched like this, it might have had more of a market presence by now. Even in this enhanced form, though, it'll still be quite a rare sight on our roads. It's good to look at, practical, full of tech, and now offers very competitive driving range figures, though they're still some way off being class leading. The problem is, though, that most of its rivals could be described in a similar way, and a number of those cars are better to drive than this one. That might not matter so much if the cabin trimming felt a bit more upmarket, and if Volkswagen wasn't asking a significant premium to go from ID4 to ID5 ownership. As it is, this car continues to face an uphill struggle in carving out market share for itself in this segment. But there's lots you might like about it, and these attributes now at last include an intuitive, user-friendly infotainment system, something the original version of this car certainly didn't have. It all means that if you like the idea of one of these on your driveway, and don't mind the aspirational asking prices, then you'll probably like almost everything else about it. But you'll be a rare kind of customer. Maybe that's part of the appeal. <laughs>